This is an NBC News special report. Here's Hallie Jackson. We are coming on the air with breaking news about former President Donald Trump, who is safe, according to his campaign, as the FBI says it is investigating what appears to be an attempted assassination, in their words, of former President Trump. Four senior law enforcement officials tell NBC News Secret Service fired in the direction of a person with a gun just outside Mr. Trump's golf course in South Florida today, and that they recovered an AR-style rifle. They say one person is in custody tonight. I want to show you, we're about to hear an update from officials there in Palm Beach County in Florida. Florida. It looks like that news conference is going to begin any second. And as it does, I want to bring in our correspondent, Tom Winter, who's been following this. Bring us up to speed on what we don't, what we know, and Tom, importantly, what we don't know, because there's still some real big questions here, too. Big questions here, Hallie, as far as the sequence of events, but as best we can figure it out, when the former president or any president is on a golf course and what's called an off-the-record event, in other words, they don't tell us about it ahead of the time, it's not publicized, what the Secret Service does is they fan out agents behind the president or their protectee or in front. The agents that were in front, several holes ahead of Trump, were told, spot an individual along uh, the tree line or in the bushes outside of the property, the golf property, where Trump was playing golf. They see him. It's not clear whether he was aiming at the former president, whether he was uh, aiming at the Secret Service agents or something else, but they see clearly, according to, the, according to them and the law enforcement officials we've been speaking to, they see that this individual is armed. They fire upon that individual. He flees, dropping the weapon, and then is pursued by local law enforcement who has the license plate and has the details and the information uh, to make that pursuit. They take that person into custody. The Secret Service and law enforcement find an assault-style rifle, a semi-automatic rifle, uh, in the bushes there, and perhaps some other items as well. That's something we're still trying to figure out. Uh, so it does appear, to bottom line it, Hallie, that an armed individual with a semi-automatic rifle was outside of the property where Donald Trump was playing golf this afternoon, and the Secret Service engaged with that individual in gunfire. The question is whether or not that person uh, fired upon the Secret right. Service or fired upon Trump prior to the Secret Service engaging. There's a lot of conflicting information, as you might imagine, Hallie, at this stage of the investigation, but that's something that we're trying to figure out, as well as who this individual is and what their specific motive might be. But the statement from the FBI, as just put in by our colleague Ken Delanian, is abundantly clear. They view this as yet another attempted assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Coming just about two months, of course, after that first attempted assassination against the former president in sure. Butler, Pennsylvania. Now, the suspect was caught basically up I-95, so north of Palm Beach right. County in a different county. And the sheriff there says when taken into custody, the suspect appeared relatively calm in demeanor. Do we know anything else about where this investigation goes from here, Tom? Because as you point out, the big question I think remaining is, did this person get a shot, a shot off, essentially, on former President Trump, on the Secret Service, et cetera? Right. And all indications are here, Hallie, given the fact that these agents were several holes away from uh, Donald Trump, that if he was firing upon them, believing that the president was part of this group, well, then likely he was far, far away from where Trump was. We should note that no shots or rounds are believed to have been found near Trump at all. He was immediately taken to safety by the Secret Service. He has since departed that location. And so right now, all we know is that if this individual did fire, they were probably too far away for certain uh, to be able to hit Trump if even to be able to get an accurate shot off uh, from that distance. So that's, again, all part of the investigation, all part of what's going on. One thing I can tell you, there are serious discussions at this hour about the ongoing safety of our political candidates and their families in this country, mm. because as you just pointed out, uh, we're within uh, two assassination attempts here within the last three months. We have the United Nations General Assembly kicking off here in New York City uh, a week and a day from now. That's when everybody is in town all these world dignitaries at a time where we have two wars going on in the world uh, with uh, Ukraine, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, as well as what's going on between Israel, Hamas, and Hezbollah. And so put all together in Iran's threats and some of the things U.S. law enforcement has been ringing the bell. Uh, an individual just several months ago arrested for attempting to assassinate a, a former, uh, a former uh, U.S. political figure here in the United States. Uh, the, uh, the alert level uh, when it comes to protecting political candidates 
candidates and the amount of threats that are coming in against Donald Trump as well as against uh, his opponent, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, remain very high. And so I think uh, uh, if there's a better illustration of that, again, pending the motive on this individual and pending what we know as far as uh, this person that's now in custody and a gun being found where they were in the Secret Service firing upon them, uh, still an open question mark. Uh, but uh, specifically, we know from the FBI uh, that at this point, they do believe that this is an attempted assassination attempt. And I think this change is the entire conversation about security. Mm. It will, remains to be seen, Hallie, but I think it is uh, easy to say uh, and perhaps assume today that the ongoing uh, presidential uh, campaigning as it snakes its way across states across this country uh, will probably look a lot different going forward. This is an NBC News special report. Here's Hallie Jackson. We're coming on the air now with breaking news about former President Trump. The FBI says it's investigating what it calls a new assassination attempt against the former president at one of his golf courses in South Florida. Now, Mr. Trump is safe after the Secret Service fired in the direction of somebody with an AK-47 style rifle, they say, who was outside Mr. Trump's golf course, aimed it in that direction while Mr. Trump was on the course. Moments ago, top state and federal law enforcement officials that it happened this afternoon. The Secret Service says that along with the rifle, you're looking at a picture here, they found a scope, two backpacks, and a GoPro camera. Now, the suspect was then found in a car on I-95, the highway running through South Florida, and taken into custody. Law enforcement officials say they have recovered the gun. I want to let you hear more now from the Palm Beach County Sheriff, Rick Bradshaw. 1.30 this afternoon, call came out, shots fired. That was called in by the Secret Service. Because we're in constant contact with them all the time, we were notified of that, and we had units here that immediately sealed off the area. Fortunately, we were able to locate a witness that came to us and said, hey, I saw the guy running out of the bushes. He jumped into a black Nissan, and I took a picture of the vehicle and the tank. Police, of course, crediting that eyewitness with helping them catch this suspect here. Now, since that happened, you are looking now at the motorcade from former President Trump leaving the golf course. He is now, we understand, back at his home at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, and his campaign says that he is safe. NBC News has also learned that President Biden and Vice President Harris have both been briefed on what happened. That concludes this NBC News special report, but we will have much more ahead on our streaming network, NBC News Now, online at NBCNews.com, and of course tonight on NBC Nightly News. I'm Hallie Jackson. On behalf of all of us here, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. of what the FBI describes as a new assassination attempt against former President Trump uh, near his golf course, Trump International, in West Palm Beach, Florida. Let me go back now to our law enforcement correspondent, Tom Winter, as we are getting new information from police, from sources, basically every minute, Tom. Talk through what your priorities are now as far as questions that we need answered. I'll tell you that on the top of our list, I think, is did this individual, did this suspect get off any shots at either the Secret Service agent in the direction of former President Trump when this exchange of gunfire happened? That wasn't clear from the briefing that we all just watched together live. That's exactly right, Hallie. So that's the big question is, was this person able to fire that weapon? And had they fired first prior to Secret Service engaging and firing at this individual? Uh, I think that's question number one. Question number two is, uh, of course, there'll be a, a deep dive into this incident. I thought I heard the sheriff say that he was approximately 500 or more yards away from where Donald Trump was. That's approaching really kind of the upper range of where an excellent uh, semi-automatic rifle person uh, could fire uh, at any individual with any sort of accuracy or ability to hit uh, that person. So uh, really at that at that range, it's, it's probably uh, very unlikely that they would have been able uh, to hit Trump, uh, thankfully. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of information that's coming out uh, now uh, in law enforcement circles about who this individual might be. We're still uh, trying to gather a little bit more information before we report that. That's going to be the next big step. And also, what did, did they find in those backpacks? They talked about ceramic tiles. I alluded 
alluded to earlier what that might be is some sort of a uh, perhaps a defense if this person was fired upon uh, but there's also a car that car was recovered so what was in the car what are on the phones all that type of information that we talk about uh, all too often unfortunately following these uh, either mass shootings or in the case of the last three months two apparent assassination attempts involving Donald Trump so uh, that's really kind of the the initial sphere of this and as the FBI has stated uh, they're involved in the investigation at some point uh, they and the Department of Justice the US Attorney's Office in Miami will take this over and will assume that uh, for now uh, based on all the details and the fact that this is a federal crime uh, that they will likely charge this individual federally and that information will come out uh, in the next 24 to 48 hours there'll be more information in there uh, in those court documents will, that will help us out and of course we'll continue to report on all of it Hallie but that specific sequence of events is of course a big question and uh, because of what happened in Butler Pennsylvania and, and some of the serious concerns about the security plan there in the US Secret Service of course that shooting led to the uh, resignation of the Secret Service director at the time there'll be a lot of questions here uh, as well but it does appear based on what the sheriff said based on what I've been told what we alluded to prior to the press conference the Secret Service's kind of natural steps here involving a former president or a presidential candidate that they would be ahead of the candidate or the former president uh, in a golf round several holes ahead of them kind of scoping the scene out, seeing if there was anybody around. And then obviously there's a robust presence around Trump uh, himself and whoever is golfing with him. Uh, that is a presence that's around him. So there's a much more close kind of presence uh, near where Trump would have been. But this individual was advancing that, seeing if there was anything out of the ordinary, anything they need to be concerned about. Obviously spotted this individual, whether or not the Secret Service fired first. Like you said, still a detail we want to know. Uh, but uh, the security uh, system here, at least, is as far as what's been laid out by the Secret Service initially appears to have worked, but there's a lot more information to get, and obviously we'll stay on top of it, Allie. Tom Winter, thank you. I think our Vaughn Hilliard is back with us as well, our correspondent covering the Trump campaign, just checking with our control room to make sure that that's the case, uh, if we do, in fact, have Vaughn. Um, and Vaughn, I want to go back to you, since I cut you off to be able to, to get in that, uh, that special report to let more stations join us here. But you were talking through the sequence of events now, as Tom was laying out, and specifically the perspective from former President Trump, who was on the golf course, was then essentially whisked into a safe location before t being taken back to his Mar-a-Lago home. Right, we're told that he was on the golf course here this afternoon with Steve Whitcoff, who is a real estate investor, donor, a friend of Donald Trump's uh, in Florida, and that they were uh, about on the fifth hole there when this incident took place here. And today was, Donald Trump got back pretty late last night from a West Coast campaign swing. He had no official campaign events on the docket today, doesn't have any tomorrow here. Mar-a-Lago has really become the place where he has spent most of his down days throughout this campaign in the West Palm Beach golf course, where he's playing is a frequent stop of his on afternoons like this. And for for Trump, I, I think it's important. It was just two months ago was the attempted assassination there in Butler, Pennsylvania. And the dynamics of our politics today has increasingly turned to threats and violence. And it's a concern uh, uh, for anybody who is not only covering the campaigns, but those that are directly working with it. For a great number of the staff that worked for Donald Trump directly, for his own family, they watched uh, watch Donald Trump almost be killed two months ago in the heart of this summer here. He is the Republican nominee for president. We are 51 days away from the general election here, and he has gone back to having some campaign events outdoors. He's had plexiglass added to the around the podium where he speaks, but most of his events have been moved indoors here. But this is one where, you know, we just saw uh, his son, Eric Trump, uh, tweet out just a, a, just a bit ago, uh, saying in part, quote, serious change is needed here. This is a, a, a point in this country. We watched this in a debate that played out on Tuesday here. We do not know uh, the motives of this individual, uh, what led them to go in, if the FBI is uh, correct in its early assessment here of an apparent attempted assassination here, what led this individual to try to take the life of the former president here. But this is one where, uh, uh, you know, in talking to voters and people that are coming to political events, uh, you have the opportunity 
opportunity in this country to have a, a, an exchange of ideas. And uh, at this moment in our politics, it has become perhaps more than ever uh, a fervent. And we have heard calls for violence. We have heard fears that a civil war is imminent from so many people that are on the ground uh, uh, engaged in this political process here. And we have seen threats uh, not only made to political candidates, an attempted assassination on the life of the former president, we have seen threats made to members of our justice system, prosecutors, judges. Judge uh, Justice Kavanaugh of the Supreme Court had a threat against his life uh, two years ago. A man was arrested outside of his home with a firearm. Uh, this is a moment where we have seen uh, uh, members of Congress be shot at. And I, I think that for the country here, this is a moment where, in the words of J.D. Vance, his vice presidential running mate, who just tweeted out a few moments ago that he'll be hugging his kids extra tight tonight and saying a prayer of gratitude. Yeah. This is, a, I think, a moment here where it's not clear what is ahead for this country. But coming off of uh, watching police officers be beaten on January 6th uh, and an attempted effort to stop the certification of the vote after Donald Trump's defeat in 2020, uh, this is a moment where it's not clear where the country is going. But after one attempted assassination, the hope was that uh, we would not see these types of events going forward. But clearly here this afternoon, while Donald Trump was playing golf, another individual uh, sought, at least uh, based off of the FBI's early indications here, sought to take the life of Donald Trump. Vaughn Hilliard, our Trump campaign correspondent. Vaughn, thank you very much. We are going to have much more coverage of what the FBI describes as another assassination attempt against former President Donald Trump coming up tonight on NBC Nightly News and, of course, online at NBCNews.com. For all of us here at the network, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.